the open virtualization appliances that are made with the open virtualization format can be exported from one brand of virtualization software and then imported into a different brand. So we're going to use that technique to export a VirtualBox machine and import it into VMware. To start with, we'll highlight the machine and we're going to go to File and Export Appliance. We'll hit Next and then we're going to give the file a name and a location to save it in. So in my case, I'm going to save it onto a network drive. And then I'll pick a name for the virtual machine. And the extension is going to be OVA. And this is going to be an open virtualization archive. And the appliance will be inside of the archive. It's kind of like a zip file in a way. And the format we're going to choose is open virtualization format 1. There is a newer format 2 that can be used as well, and that works pretty well. The safest one to use is format 1, but take note that 1 doesn't support exporting as many features. However, it does cover the most commonly used features. So if you can get away with using 1, that is the most compatible format, and if you have features that aren't covered by 1, you may want to switch to using 2. We hit Next and Export. This process can take a while. The virtual machines are large files out on the disk and depending on the size of the virtual machine you're exporting and also the speed of the computer, this can take somewhere around 10 minutes. But if the virtual machine is really small, it may take under 5 minutes. In either case, be prepared to wait some time and don't interrupt the process. If the process is complete, the progress bar will disappear and the OV file has been exported. So now we'll import it into VMware. In our case, we're going to use Fusion as an example, but the process is the same for the different VMware products. So in Fusion, we're going to click File and Import. And when we choose the file, we're going to choose the file that we created by exporting from the virtual box. We'll open that OVA file and hit continue. And then we need to give the new virtual machine that's going to be created in VMware a name. In this case, I'm just going to leave the name alone. I'd already chosen the name when I saved the file in the first place. So we could skip that step. But feel free to rename it at this point if you would like. Now VMware is going to go through the import process. It's reading in that large OVA file. And inside of there is the disk. The VMDK file represents the hard drive. And that's going to be the biggest file by far in your OVA. When that's complete, if you like, you can go ahead and customize the settings now by clicking on Customize Settings. And this is where we can set up like the processor and memory. We can change those if we want to set up network cards like a host only adapter and other settings. And then once you're happy with the way everything is set up, then you can go ahead and start your new virtual machine. To do that, you can hit play. And depending on the version of VMware that you have, especially the newer versions, they'll want to change the default format of the virtual machine to the more optimal VMware proprietary format. And that's not a problem at all. You should go ahead and do that. Because you can always export a virtual machine from VMware back into the OVA format later.